Hulu, are you going to open it? Or, or... Welcome back, everybody. This, uh, this is our, this is the, it's already, we're two seconds no, in it's our not muted. podcast and it was muted. It's not muted. So, John, just so you know, and the, for the listeners who didn't listen last week, this happened to Julio twice in that episode. It happened to Julio twice the episode before that. Yeah, it's funny. Get it together, Julio. Come on. It's All also right. a great opening for our guest. Right. <laughs> Anyways, here we are with our good friend, John, Mr. John Frisch, after spending this whole last weekend with them for a bachelor party. I was That's like, you right. know, I wasn't enough. We want more. More John. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So if you don't know, John's been on here a few times before. Uh, he is the host of the Super Halo Bros, which is a pod that him and his brother do for the last couple of years now, focusing on Angels baseball. But as of the beginning of this year, on top of that, uh, his, his brother and him are now the host of Locked on Angels. So, That's right. Uh, Welcome to the show. I know you and uh, you've been shooting the shit a lot with our buddy Jason Burke. So it's like yeah, full circle now. Totally. Yeah. No, it's been it's been great talking to him and uh, uh, like that guy a lot. He's awesome. What was the the conversation that we had where me? I think it was me, you and Julio were talking about a group text. And then like 10 minutes later, Jason tweeted it. And I was like, yeah, you know, we were just talking to, <laughs> it was about, to John about this. It was about trading for Montas if the Angels would, would Joe put Adele, up a package right. yeah, with Joe Adele yeah. for Montas, which, man, after this weekend, uh, people were saying, can we take can we take Frankie with us back to Anaheim? Because <laughs> he pitched a heck of a game. It was like 12 strikeouts or something like that, 11 strikeouts. Yeah. That yeah, guy, that's man. that's the, the that's been like the last week. We're like, wow, this, this person, X person's getting a great the start out there and then uh just can't hit like like today um you know well the game's still going but like zach Lowe got a good game but yeah. just yeah. offense was not there the thing with frankie though that i think your fans might be a little ignorant to that if they got him it, he would frustrate the shit out of you because he has mm-hmm. like three great starts in a row where he looks like the best pitcher in baseball and then he'll yeah. just have an abs- just absolutely shit the bed for one and give up like nine runs not oh geez runs, but he'll give up like six runs something like that in like in two innings and you're just like what the fuck like what happened like he just isn't on it he's just he's a roller coaster he's just not consistent at all whatsoever but when he's on he just has the stuff like nobody's business yeah we've just been trying to figure out like you know who's who's going to be the guy that the angels if they're in contention at the deadline like who are they going to go after and so his name's come up a lot um shane bieber's come up a lot because mm-hmm. the Guardians spent all their money on Jose Ramirez and <laughs> probably won't keep Bieber. The thing that concerns me about him is he seems to, it seems like his velocity kind of dipped yeah. in the last year. So I don't know if there's some health stuff going on there. And then Luis Castillo is always in talks, but like I want to I want a big arm, like a win now kind of guy. Like Shane Bieber so, could be that. Has yeah. Shane Bieber always been? I, I don't know enough about him specifically. Has he always been reliant on his velocity? I don't think so. It's just, I think it was concerning because he got hit pretty badly. I think, was it against the Phillies or I forgot who they were playing, but he got hit around really bad yeah. last week, but then he had a great outing this past week. So might've just been one of those things, but yeah. And then with Montas, like uh, that's, inter- uh, that's a good point that you made about him kind of being a roller coaster, because if he had one of those bad outings as like his first outing as an angel, like that would angels Twitter would be, it would have a meltdown. <laughs> They're so sensitive about like when we like, like on Monday, like we lost the game against the Rangers and everyone's panicking. Like it's, it's one game. <laughs> like it's the yeah. Rangers. Like we, last time we lost to them was the first game of the last series. And then we've, we've gone like 22 and eight since then. So it's just been a wild ride since that last series with them. But uh, yeah, I think that would have a meltdown if Frankie ever had a bad outing with us. Like we gave up what for Frankie? And then... <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> the thing is, he would need a team like you guys, like right after the deadline to play and like really just throw out his stuff and yeah, like a team that he dominates, which he does. He dominates you guys on yeah like, all the regularly. time. <laughs> so it's like it's like he would need a team like that, and then like it would show the fan base like, oh damn, like this is pretty good. And then the next start, he could shit the bed, but because that first one's so good, like it it would it would it would completely just mold your opinion on him. Sorry, you know who, you're going to say something. You know who would be a hypothetical trade? Uh, Mad Bum. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Hmm. What's he looking like these days? Do you think he would want to come? He's had a pretty good year. Come back to um, California? I don't know. 
I mean, Orange County, come on, that guy would but, <laughs> fit but, right in. But Orange County, in terms of, yeah, his political views probably right. would fit. But like in terms of like what his recreational life is like, which I think was a pretty deciding factor on the reason why he went to Arizona. He could mm. buy up all this fucking desert land and just ride his dirt bike all over the place in the off season. Like he couldn't do that in San Francisco. He was always having to go back home to I think it was Georgia he's from or something like that during the off season. Like he doesn't have to do that in Arizona. Which is I, total BS because there's so much how many people do we know growing up who are dirt bikers? Yeah, like, oh, yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah you a ton. Could, like that's yeah. totally whack on his yeah. behalf. You could totally go to like Modesto and get a place like that. And <laughs> Anyways, we're here on a Mad Bum uh personal life podcast where we're gonna be talking about his dating life next. No but, <laughs> so for the season um for the season, he's got a 1.78 ERA. He's made Good seven grief. starts. Yeah. So he's, and that he's, he's probably, it. yeah, he's doing really well. Uh, the D backs are above 500 now, but I could, uh, we think we all can see them just kind of falling off. So, yeah. yeah, heck, that could be a pretty good opportunity. I think he would actually fit him pretty well there. And the only thing is, is, again, he's kind of an asshole and just always has a stick up his butt. <laughs> and the Angels, at least, I think that's the biggest thing I've been seeing a lot from this team this season, which I think it might be different from the last few years. They seem to be having more fun. Yeah. yeah. Like you're seeing the cowboy hat, the home run cowboy hat that they're mm-hmm. doing. Um, I think just kind of having like Otani really being like comfortable in his space now, yeah. which is something that he's always taken been a few fun, years. Though, I feel like. But now, but like, it's been now Trout that's had the... a stick up his ass all the time, it feels like. No, Trout's always been like, he usually gets along with everybody really well. Um, what well, I think not, he doesn't, he's not as playful. It feels like he's playful in dugout now, or like in the past, it never that's seemed true. like he was like that. He's like cordial and he's friends with people. And, but now he's like fucking around in there. You know what I mean? You know what like, I think a, a big part of that is, is Trout has always kind of let the veterans in the locker room be the leaders. And now he's, the leader because yeah. Pujols is gone. Upton's gone. All those guys that came before him are, are gone. So it's finally Trout's locker room, I think in a lot of ways, uh, somebody from angels radio was saying like, yeah, it feels different in the locker room because it feels like this is Trout's team. And so hopefully that this excitement that they're having and the fun that they're having is kind of an extension of, of him being a locker room leader now, which I I've thought for years, he should be the one kind of in charge of that locker room because he's, the face of our franchise in terms of the, the guy who was loyal and signed the long deal. And now that again, like pools is gone and Upton's gone, those guys, I think he's kind of stepping into that role, which is good to see long time coming. As long as he doesn't step into like their, you know, downfalls, knock on wood here. <laughs> so there's, there's been a lot of surprises this season with mm-hmm. the angels. What would you say is, and I think I know what you're going to say. What would you say is probably the player been like, where the hell did this come from? <laughs> and we all, I think I know what you're going to say, but let's see what. Yeah. It's got to be Taylor Ward, man. Mm-hmm. He was our number one pick in 2015 and they drafted him as a catcher. Then they tried him at third base. Then they tried him at the outfield. There was talk of bringing him back to catcher last season. So what did uh, he get drafted I, as, uh, as a catcher, okay. which was a, which was a, Jerry DePoto move, I think. I don't think Billy Epler was there yet. He drafted like two catchers in a row. It was weird. But he picked him number one. And now the guy is 28, I think. And just finally figuring it out. And I think it all has to do with the fact that he's not moving around anymore. He's got his spot in the right in right field. And also, I think Joe Madden was talking about him in spring training and just saying like, yeah, he's my guy. And Joe Madden seems to like pick a guy on, on his team, like that, he just kind of zeroes in zero in on and says like, yeah, that's the guy I want to roll with. Um, and I felt like, you know, that was Chris Bryan or like Javi Baez or like back in the day. And, um, and with Ward, I think now that he's not moving positions all the time, he's finally got his spot and then they let go of Upton so that he could play every day. So I wonder if there's kind of a mental idea of just like, okay, like they got rid of that guy. So I could be, in the lineup. And so now I'm here to show up and show out and prove everybody that they made the right move. So yeah, he's been a huge surprise for this team. Going to read off some numbers for the folks listening at home. Taylor Ward is batting 385 (laughs) with uh, eight home runs, 22 RBIs, 21 walks to 25 strikeouts. 
Um, he's just really hitting the crap out of the ball. And it's again, it's just like one of those things you've he was always an afterthought of a player. Angel yeah, I never pretty, thought he'd be in this position. Angel Stadium is pretty middle of the park, too, in terms of uh, hitters and pitcher ballpark, though, right? Yeah, it used to be very pitcher friendly, but I'm not sure what changed. Maybe it was when they lower the right field wall for what counts as a home run because the wall yeah. stayed the same. They just added a, a yellow line, but it, it became a lot more hitter friendly in recent years. But I'd say it's pretty much in the middle, like you said. Yeah. Now, who would you say is your biggest disappointment? Biggest disappointment? Um, I got to say probably Fletcher. I know he's hurt right now. Wow. Yeah, I know. Not Rendon, <laughs> huh? No, I think Rendon, he'll still come around. Um, You're paying him, him like hundreds of millions of dollars. <laughs> so this come around bullshit, I mean, I would be I've, pissed if I were I've been you. I've been through all this before with Pujols the last 10 I years. Know, so there's nothing new for me. <laughs> and, 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 and Josh Josh Hamilton. And yeah. Like, I mean, like the list goes on. So if anything, I would think that that would stress me out more about these big contracts. I honestly think that just with... Because in 2020, he was top 10 in MVP voting. I know it was a short season. And then last year, apparently he had the, the hip problems. Mm-hmm. And then Julio, you mentioned just how much Chapman struggled to come back from, from hip surgery. So I think that's kind of a concern on the back of my mind regarding Rendon. But man, he, I, he's like the ultimate like victim of the dead ball this season. Because everything he hits out, he hits hard. And then it falls at the warning track. <laughs> it's like he doesn't get out. So, I mean, and then he's patient. Like he's seeing the ball well and everything. Like I know the numbers don't reflect it, but I just feel like uh, every at bat, you don't feel like, oh, great, automatic out. Like when he comes up to the plate and then, you know, I, I, his defense is super solid. I know we're not paying him that much money to play defense, but at the same time, I, I still feel like I'm not, I'm not out on Rendon yet. There, there's other guys to get out on first before Rendon, I think. Yeah, absolutely. And, and and just from watching the weekend series from when they were up in Oakland, yeah, it really seemed like um, he hit like 50 doubles. I don't <laughs> like it seemed like every other like this fucking guy. And I was like, oh, Tony, every time I was like, Tony, two bags, Tony, two bags. Yeah, bags. he's getting back. Uh, to that. By the he's way, he's been hitting a lot of doubles. He's just lost three one final. Who uh, they play? Twins. The uh, twins, freaking twins. They're first in the central, aren't they? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They finally yeah. have a healthy Buxton. <laughs> For now. For now. For now. We'll see. Yeah. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Knock on wood. All that stuff. Yeah, yeah. we actually had a conversation. I was like, uh, we were talking last week about how, what, what, like, we were like, okay, the Angels are doing pretty well. Mm-hmm. What's gonna make us take them serious? So think, yeah, for your yeah, for, so someone who's a fan who, who's kind of seen the same old song and dance before, like, what do you think is different this time around? Yeah, I think if we are still fighting for first place in in like mid June, then it's like okay, like let's take them seriously. Like the rest of the league can take them seriously. And what's funny is like you guys know me; I've always been a positive fan and always hope for the best. But like in the past, when we've had hope, we think about like. One year we had hope we had Danny Espinosa playing second base. <laughs> like we had Yunel Escobar at third base and, and our opening day starter last year was Dylan Bundy, you know? And, and just so it's like, I'm always optimistic and hopeful, but like that always bites me in the butt. And this is a team where it's like, Oh wait, we've got, a, you know, proven starter in Otani this season. Like he actually has gone out and shown that he can pitch a full year and do, and do both. Um, I know Syndergaard kind of crapped the bed on, on Monday, but uh, so far he's been really doing really well. He's not throwing as hard, but I think it's actually contributing to his pitch mix a lot better. It's not so much that he's a flamethrower. He's using his other pitches really well with his fastball. And then Patrick Sandoval has been a great guy since he's come up. I've always been a big fan of him. And, uh, and then freaking Reed Detmer's getting a no hitter. Like I didn't see that coming. I've always like rooted for him. But uh, that was that was really awesome to see. And so and then a healthy Trout, a healthy Otani, Rendon, Jared Walsh. Um, I know we don't have a hitting shortstop, but freaking Andrew Velasquez has been doing like Andrelton Simmons kinds of plays there at shortstop this season. And then Tyler Wade's been a nice surprise. And uh, yeah. And then, of course, Taylor Ward, like 
again, I wouldn't have seen that coming this season, but it is really positive and really awesome that, oh, this is a team I can have hope in and, and not like fake myself out or like talk myself into it. I'm like, oh no, this is, this is a good team. It, one thing that Julio and I were laughing about was I picked up Taylor Ward in fantasy before anyone else, mm-hmm. because I saw it happening because <laughs> I'm watching every game. I'm like, mm-hmm. oh, I got to get this guy before the rest of our league get, gets him. So yeah, I mean, God, I think, damn it. I think that this is a, this is a, a good year for us. And um, barring any like serious injuries, like we can't lose trout again for the whole season. And I think that he's taken much better care of himself. They're giving him a few more days off so far this season. Um, I'd expect that he plays 145, 150 games rather than trying to play all 162. I mean, he's already passed playing all 162, but I mean, he's a guy that would go out there every single day and play center field. And he's already DH'd one or two games and he's already had like one or two days off. So trying to be really careful with these guys and not push them so hard at the beginning of the season. But again, I think middle of June, if we're if we're still fighting for that first place spot, I think that's that's kind of about the time that you start to see the teams that pull ahead and the ones that kind of fall behind. So hopefully we don't fall behind in June like we have in years past. Yeah. You see that, Chris? We got a month to get our shit together. <laughs> get it together, guys. I yeah, keep bro. joking. I keep joking with Julio. I'm like, the A's will find a way. They always find a way. <laughs> I don't think it's going to happen this year. Not this time. If they keep doing putting up one run games. Um I would look out for a, a coming out party for Detmer after that that no hitter. It reminded me a lot of the Shamanaya no hitter in 2018. Yeah, um, we were kind of like in the mix. We weren't in first place, but we were like you know an above, barely above 500 team that year. Obviously, we didn't get much publicity because of we we're in the same division as the Astros, who had just won the World Series. Right. And um, but he throws that no hitter and all of a sudden it's like ace fans are like oh something interesting is going on here like, mm. and then you look you kind of like look at the stats and you're like wow jed lowry's like having an all-star season and it's like oh marcus simeon's having like a borderline all-star season he's yeah totally, totally turned around his glove and you know matt olson's having a great year and matt chapman should be an all-star even though he didn't become one that year and you kind of look at the team and you're like what the fuck and then you august comes around and it's like oh shit they're like they're gonna win how many games they win that year? Julio, 99, 98? They won like, like 97, 98. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. Fucking Astros. <laughs> that was that was the year of, uh, that was the year of uh I remember like the big storyline going into the playoffs was the the AL super teams. There was four super teams, like which one, which AL super team is gonna get out of the American League? Mm-hmm. It was gonna be a dogfight between like us, the Yankees, because the Yankees had a hundred wins and they were a wild card team too. And uh uh the Astros and 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 uh I think it was the Red Sox and yeah, that's, you know, anyway, but, um, yeah, I, I would look out for that to be a sign. Um, but, um, that question, that being said, if you had to start a playoff series right now, what would be your rotation like lineup out of, out of who we got now? I think you got to roll with some combination of Otani like who's starting game one, who's starting. Game oh two, yeah. Who's starting game yeah. Three, who's starting game four. I think, I think I would start Otani game one. I would let him do that. And then probably Syndergaard second. Uh, I probably would roll with Sandoval third. Why is that? And then, and then Detmer's fourth. Yeah, yeah. I think you you can rely on him a little bit more. Um, but yeah, the the well, I, I guess I'm forgetting about Michael Lorenzen. I want to see I want to see a full season of Lorenzen before I put him in a a playoff spot. But those four, I think I would totally count on. But I also think that's why the Angels want to add or would want to add another arm by the deadline because if you could have Otani Thor and another win now armed, like you can take three of those games pretty easily, especially with the offense. So, but yeah, if I had to go with the, who's there now, I would say Otani one, Syndergaard two, Sandoval three and Detmers four. Hmm. I could see that rookie coming in and pitching a fourth slot. That'd be interesting. Yeah. We've already seen this story before Chris. <laughs> pitching a fourth slot. Oh, well, actually, no. I was thinking more like Sonny Gray, but he was like in the third. Um, no, I think he was the second that year, didn't he? Wasn't it Bartolo oh, alone? He pitched game two. That's right. Yes, you're right. My and bad. That was when he went toe to toe with Verlander, um, and they won a one zero game. Bottom of the dang. ninth, walk off. I was in that game. I was in the stadium. We're there, That's right? Awesome. That was like Sonny Gray's coming out party. It was like it was like what the fuck? This rookie is just going toe to toe with Verlander. Like, who the <laughs> fuck is this guy? I love those kinds of games. <laughs> 
also right. loved, I think we have a new thing in common too. And uh, Chris, I don't know if you've seen the stories about this, but it looks like you're also in some heat when it comes to a stadium deal going on now yeah. too, right? Yes. Good grief, man. Apparently the Long, Beach, the thing hell? So, the Long Beach thing isn't a thing anymore, right? No, no. So yeah. Anaheim and the city of Anaheim pushed a sale through to Artie Marino's ownership group. And it kind of happened real like there was a lot of talk about like, what are they going to do? What are they going to do? And all of a sudden it was like, oh, it's done. And everyone's like, what? So then there was a there was a public group that was concerned about the number of affordable housing units that they're going to build with the plans. And so that stalled things. Then it went to the state and uh, or maybe it went to the county and the county was like, no, it's fine. Everything's good. Well, now the FBI is investigating Whoa. the mayor of Anaheim for like sharing privileged information with the angels and also probably like withholding information from the courts and all this stuff. So mm. now that's now it's on hold again. So yeah, just all this stadium political nonsense. Of course, uh, you can always count on your conservative Orange County friends to uh, <laughs> for corruption. I guess. Well, would it be in the same well, spot, better- same location? It would be the same location. Um, yeah, because they're they're they, building it up so much that area. I feel like that would just be a waste for all those businesses that are already just like m- just moved in there, like Golden. Yeah, Bell they and would fucking um, Carl Strauss and like all these places that have made it like a, a destination before and after a game. Totally. Well, I guess yeah. we gotta start calling them the Las Vegas Angels, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I just want you guys to know that on on our pod when we talked about the A's, I was like, hey. Let's be kind to the A's fans because if we were in this situation, we would hate it too. So like we we have to deal with a crappy ownership that wants that does everything they can to like try to make the team move. I mean, I was I was like, let's be kind to our our fellow A's fans out there <laughs> as as human beings, as people. Let's be kind. But yeah, so eventually, I saw the the final product. Like the whole stadium is actually. I don't know if they would do a new one. I think it was like thirty years down the road for the full plan but it was like next to where the current stadium is now they would get rid of that Mm -hmm. but before they knocked it down they would build up that whole area with like apartments and businesses and stuff so yeah they want to keep it in that same location just make make more use of the space that's out there um and do some parking garages rather than the widespread parking that they have now so yeah yeah freaking stadium (laughs) yeah it's weird Uh, i actually thought i was talking to somebody yesterday over at curling shout out to uh SoCal curling, curling. <laughs> uh, and uh he was talking about because he's from it's my, actually my, my curling teammate he's from uh pennsylvania he's like i actually enjoyed going to an angels game more than i did going to a dodgers game hmm. and he's like because like it was just way easier to get in and out of which, yeah mm-hmm. yes one thousand percent yeah and he's like it's just, and it was kind of what we talked about when we went to that game last summer um with otani against montas and we we're just like Honestly, when it's like mellow, you just you hang out and you just drink and have a good time. We're like, this is what how you watch baseball. So yeah. like I, I, yeah. I kind of understand that part. Whereas Dodger Stadium just becomes is awesome, but like sometimes it gets too much of a party where it's not really many <laughs> times where it's just mellow, where you can just right. chill. Yeah. Right. It's intense the whole time. <laughs> the yeah. modello is flowing. People are having a good time. Yeah. <laughs> the twenty dollar so- micheladas. That's right. That's so right. Let me ask you this. I don't know. Like, do we want to wrap it up, Julio? Because I feel like this is a good last question. If you want me to wait. The, I want to hear this. Yeah. Yeah. I'm ready, I'm ready to wrap this. What's your good last question? So do you. So I'll ask you the question. Then I want to bring up some evidence. So. OK. Do you think that this is for real? Because I'm looking at your schedule and I'll be honest with you. It's not super impressive. So you start off the season. Against the Dodgers, it's a tough one. You went get two out of three there, which is impressive. And then you lost um, three out of four to the Astros. Then you played the Marlins, not a good team. Played the Rangers, not a good team. Played the Astros again, did a good series, two out of three there. And then you played the Orioles, not a good team. Guardians, not a good team. White Sox, good team. Um, and then it falls off again. Red Sox, Nationals, mm-hmm. A's. Mm-hmm. I mean, like it, you know, it's there's some some good series wins but like the only really impressive one you got on there is is really the dodgers because we the astros are not looking like the same astros anymore those those dodger games were were preseason we play every year we play at dodger stadium then um, we also played in so so houston was our first series impressive. yeah <laughs> um, 
and 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 the White Sox, I guess, definitely the White Sox. White Sox were my World Series AL pick, but um, but yeah, I mean, like, so so what what do you, what do you think? Is it yeah? Are, I think are, is your record a product of your schedule, or do you guys think you're for real? I think you know this month will be a true test, and I think into June, I think we start getting into more tough teams like the Yankees, and those will be the prove it series that I'm I'm really looking forward to those. Yeah, and the Blue at the, Jays the, coming up too. Blue Jays, yeah. And on the same token, I was looking at the Astros schedule and they their toughest team seemed to kind of just be the Blue Jays as well um, yeah. in their series. And then they faced us and, you know, they took a series and we took one. And so I, I it's weird. I think we're I think that spring training, late spring training and a late start to the season kind of threw off the whole dang schedule. But, um, you know, as long as my biggest concern is beating teams in the West, because the Angels have been terrible against AOS teams for the last few years. And as long as we can keep stacking up those wins, like, like losing to the Rangers on Monday night, like that's a game you got to win. You can't mm-hmm. lose that. Yeah. And, and I know it was just, again, Syndergaard kind of crap in the bed, but I'm hopeful that they can take the next two games um, against the Rangers. And then, you know, we got Oakland again and, and those are games that they have to win. Like they have to beat those guys so that when they have those tough series against the Yanks and the Blue Jays, you can, you can spare a loss or two in those things. And we're always talking about on our, on locked on angels, like you got to win the series. Like don't, don't get down on one game. You got to be series focused and series minded. And so if you can keep taking two out of three from people or three out of four, I think so far they've won eight, eight of their 11 series so far. They, they split the one with the white Sox, And then I think they lost two, but it was one against the Astros and then one against the Orioles freaking Orioles pitching, was phenomenal that weekend. So yeah. there's there's some arms that we can all look at in the future. But yeah, I think this upcoming month will really prove um, if the Angels are are make or break. And and again, I think by mid June we'll be able to look back and say, all right, like let's take them seriously. Let's see how they're doing. So you're not worried about I, the Mariners. Yeah, Mariners are interesting. I, I just I just feel like with Trout being back on the team, like he just owns the Mariners and we didn't have him last year against the, against the end. So I'm looking forward to seeing that. And uh, I think they're coming back down to earth a little bit in terms yeah, of their, their, their pitching and their but hitting. Still at the end, I mean, they would be the team in, in the West. I'd be worried about, I wouldn't be worried about the Astros. I, I really yeah. think the Astros are just, they're on the downhill of their dynasty. If you want to call it that, but Mariners are only on the upswing and they're, they're pesky, man. They're, they always find a way their pitchers. We make them look like, Cy Young winners all the time, like freaking Nolan Ryan's out there. So <laughs> hopefully we don't do that again this season, but yeah, we j- actually just kind of had that same conversation. My brother, Mike said the same thing. He was mostly worried about the Mariners as well. So yeah, we'll see what happens. I'm, I'm looking forward to facing them. I was, I was excited about playing the A's. It was like, finally we get to play some AOS teams because all we've done is play the Rangers and the Astros so far. So, and then it fell on the, the bachelor party weekend. So that was fun. We got to watch the games together. <laughs> Yeah, I, I didn't have a great time. And the one game we didn't watch is the game one. Brea walk-off <laughs> because we're on the double boat. Header. Oh, yeah, yeah. You guys had a yeah, I, I would just check day. my phone. I'm like, oh, you had a walk-off. I was yeah, like, the, that's cool. The whole time you were texting, you were like, ah, dang it, now the Angels are up three. And then <laughs> you're like, oh, John, look at this walk-off. And so, like, oh, no. So, But I'd give I'd give Rysel Iglesias the ninth inning any day. That That's going to happen. Those, those blow-ups will happen. Exactly. All righty, John. Again, always a pleasure talking with you. Uh, yes. I'll see you at the next bachelor party weekend. Uh, but before we let you go, go ahead and just, you know, the room is yours. Go ahead and plug what you want to plug. Yeah. Uh, you can find us uh, locked on angels, wherever you get your podcasts. And if you search us on YouTube, we have a channel going there. So uh, you can check us out there. And then of course, at locked on angels is the Twitter handle. And then you can also get us on Instagram and Twitter at Super Halo Bros. We're keeping the, the Halo Bros brand alive while we're hosting Lockdown Angels. <laughs> we gave you yeah, guys so- a little bit of a shout out, too, because we talked about the A's and I asked you some questions, Julio. So I made sure to, to share the podcast love with, with Town Tailgate. <laughs> nice. Everything's sad right now. <laughs> yeah. Need all the love you can get, right? Yeah. Yeah. But um, I love the, the summary that I think you told me once before where like, Locked on is like your sports center and super halo bros is kind of like your, uh, like what's the show Sunday that conversation like Sunday conversation. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I like that. With, a lot. with, with Scott Van Pelt. 
Yeah, yeah, there we go. <laughs> but I think the best way to describe this dynamic is how the turn table. <laughs> I know, I know it's like to be in your shoes. Yeah, yeah but you guys, you guys will be back by like 2024, 2025. It's, it's not going to yeah, take probably. very long. <laughs> and then the table will be turned again. <laughs> yep. All right, John. Thanks for joining us again, buddy. See you on the next one. Thanks, fellas.